Well, continuing our series on myths about our health and well-being, and this morning, skin care. Dermatologist Dr. Natasha Cook is with us. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Leila. Now, before we look at some of these myths, there is a new warning that's out about some of the anti-acne drugs, that uh, they've been linked to birth defects and in the past to depression as well. What are some of the research about that? Well, the medication that you're talking about is isotretinoin, which is a synthetic form of vitamin A, and it's an excellent treatment for acne. It's completely revolutionised the treatment of acne, particularly for patients who suffer quite inflammatory and cystic acne, which without this drug, they'd end up with permanent, very disfiguring scarring. The um, links with birth defects are actually very well substantiated, and certainly as a dermatologist, we have extensive counselling with patients prior to prescribing this medication, warning them they are not to fall pregnant on the medication. They require a pregnancy test before going on the drug and are advised to have at least one form of contraception while taking the medication. The course is usually approximately six to eight months and the improvements in the skin are just overwhelmingly impressive. Um, there is no long-term detrimental effects as far as birth defects are concerned once the patient has stopped the drug and it's recommended that they don't try and fall pregnant for at least a month. And you say there are no substantiated links to depression or suicide in young people? No, there's not. There is no clear evidence associated with this medication causing suicide or depression. Um, the amount of case reports are anecdotal and they're extremely rare. You have to understand that over 20 million prescriptions of this medication have been prescribed worldwide since it has been on the market for 20 years. Um, and in fact, independent research and evidence points to the contrary, that people actually feel really good on this medication and their mood goes up because their skin's getting better and they're happy. Okay, let's get into the myths. Wrinkles are caused by dry skin, are they? False. Wrinkles aren't caused by dry skin. Certainly dry skin will make a wrinkle look worse because a dry, flaky texture doesn't reflect light as effectively and so it draws attention to the wrinkles. Wrinkles are caused by two main things. That's basically sun damage which breaks down the collagen fibres in the lower layers of the skin, reducing the support to the skin layer and producing more wrinkles. And the other main cause of wrinkles is facial expression and repetitive movement. So Botox prevents wrinkles? Botox does prevent wrinkles and it's an excellent treatment for wrinkles as well. Okay, you need to use eye cream for the skin around your eyes, they say. If anything, you have to use eye cream. Is that correct? False. It's not correct. The skin around your eyes is actually identical to the skin on the rest of your face, except it's finer. Hence, it creases more readily. So you can really use the moisturiser you use on the rest of your face around your eyes as well and save a bit of money. Okay, let's whip through the next uh, one. Once you hit your 20s, you stop getting acne. Absolutely false. And I know that one's not true. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, particularly women um, find due to the effect of hormones that they can have ongoing acne problems really well into their 40s. And this is a big myth that patients get very concerned about and a lot of people are presenting that never had acne in puberty. They hit their late 20s, early 30s and they're having big problems with acne. This sort of acne tends to be predominantly hormonally based, um, mainly in women, and has a classic distribution of being in the jawline and around the mouth area. Okay, is acne caused by chocolate or stress? Not chocolate, yes, stress. Stress isn't great for any organ system of the body and the skin is no exception. And certainly we see when people go through stressful periods of their life, like exams, relationship breakups, financial uncertainty, their skin flares. But we can eat chocolate, that's good news. You certainly can. Thanks, Dr. Cook. You're welcome.